Uh, well, hello everybody. Uh, welcome back to our traditional uh, end of the month AMA session. I hope you're all feeling well. Uh, I'm feeling absolutely amazing. And as always with me is Diana. Uh, hello, Diana. Hello, everyone. Let's begin and hear the latest news and announcements from Vlad. Amazing. Thank you, Diana. Diana, again, was kind enough to collect uh, all of your questions uh, from the, uh, from the uh, Google form that we sent out on Monday. So now uh, we will ask those questions and we will ask some questions from, uh, from the YouTube chat and from, uh, from the Telegram as well. So without further ado, uh, let's move on. As always, uh, let me remind you for some of you who are not uh, familiar with the format that we hold. Uh, so every Thursday of every single month. So we had, first of all, we had quite a lot of new users coming over to our platform. Uh, so let me just recap for those who are new uh, to the channel. So every Thursday, uh, last Thursday of the month, uh, we hold a traditional AMA session. Uh, it usually lasts from around 45 to minutes to an hour, maybe slightly longer, maybe slightly less. Uh, it depends how I'm feeling, how many things uh, that we have on the agenda. But nonetheless, uh, we hold those sessions uh, to inform you, first of all, that, you know, uh, what is going on in the company. Sometimes you hear uh, you hear some news that, you know, we haven't announced yet. So people do, uh, old investors know that I sometimes reveal uh, inadvertently some, sometimes, you know, some certain news. Uh, but um, yeah, do tune in. So this is our traditional uh, format. We submit, we post a uh, form with the questions uh, that you can ask me, uh, then we compile them together. We sometimes rewrite them to make them more interesting, but it kind of uh, helps us to gasp uh, what, you know, uh, what is going on in the community, what worries people have. Um, so that's, that's a good format. And, you know, lastly, of all, uh, I think it is important to kind of show your face and to show that the company is real. We have real people behind the company and it obviously helps to build trust and it helps me to communicate with you to kind of to know what is going on within the community, what worries you, what we could change, uh, you know. So it's a collaborative process. Our platform is a community-driven uh, platform as well. So, yeah, that is what is going on at the moment. And Diana collects the questions, she looks through the chat, she looks through the Telegram chat, we have a Discord as well, uh, and she asks me those questions. And usually the way that we conduct uh, the CMA session is I give some kind of news and announcements uh, that we have uh, within the company that usually lasts, I don't know, about 10 minutes or so. Sometimes we discuss the news if uh, something was big was going on. So a couple of months ago, we were discussing uh, the FTX scandal. We were discussing uh, previously in quite a bit of detail uh, the, um, you know, the uh, legal developments within uh, the US uh, legislative process with regards to crypto. And for example, the new legislation that uh, was introduced uh, in the European Union as well. So, you know, we discuss news, we discuss, you know, the latest developments, and that's how it goes. So without further ado, let me get started from the biggest announcement uh, that has happened last week. Uh, Point Pay has managed to achieve number 14 on CoinGecko, which is absolutely amazing. Well done, everybody. Uh, that was that literally took all of us by surprise. Uh, we were kind of hovering at around the 30, uh, 28 uh, mark for about a month. So we were comfortably a tier three exchange, uh, but never in our dreams, uh, you know, we were, well, I was anticipating it, but you know, um, Yes, yeah, so pretty much quite a lot of people came over. Uh, we had quite a lot more trades on our platform. I think before we had about uh, 25 uh, million uh, trading volume a day. It has increased to about 100 million a day, so four, three times as much. 
I can't count, but you get the gist. Uh, and because of that, and because of some other developments uh, that we did, uh, we had a bug bounty program and other bits and bobs as well around our platform. Uh, we managed to uh, just scrape by to get number 14. I wasn't able to screenshot it, but somebody screenshotted it within our community. So very well done. I only have a good screenshot of number 15. Um, so that's absolutely amazing. And I think at the moment we're hovering around the mark of uh, you know, 17. But that still puts us comfortably within uh, a tier 2 exchange band which is absolutely insane you know never in my wildest dreams if we could remember what was going on uh, less than a year ago in february and january when we were just listed on uh on coin geeko you know our rating was in the hundreds you know we had 101 120 then we kind of managed to uh kind of climb up to number 80 but now we're number 14 which is absolutely insane um so very, very well done to everybody within our community. Uh, second of all, that has happened uh, within the last actually couple of days, not even uh, a month or a week. Uh, so last Friday, uh, we introduced 25 new uh, trading pairs on our platform. Um, let me just read them out. So uh, Ethereum pairs, uh, TRX, BNB, Matic, Awe, uh, that was misspelt in one of our posts, uh, Polkadot, Solana, uh, and Litecoin. Uh, we had a couple of new uh, USDT pairs, ING, LDO, FTM, SNX, TWT, uh, DYDX, and COMP. Uh, I don't really know what those are, but they're actually being actively traded in our platform. And we have also added the additional... Uh, Bitcoin pairs, Awe, Solana, BNB, ADA, uh, RNDR, AVAX, DOT, uh, that's Polkadot, ING, Matic, Dogecoin, and One Inch. And also at the beginning of this week, uh, we had have had a, a spree of uh, new coins as well. So we've decided to add an additional 17 coins. Something didn't go to exact plan. Uh, that's because of me. Uh, we were supposed to release two a day, uh, but I've, um, yeah, I uh, I fucked up a bit uh, and released one on Monday. So we were supposed to have two on tu Monday, two on Tuesday, two on Wednesday, and two today. But because I screwed up, we had one on Monday, two uh, on Tuesday, two yesterday, and three today. That's completely my fault, but nonetheless, uh, we uh, we will um, we will uh, fix that in the future. You know, we'll have more clear communications. But overall, we had forty one new pairs, which is absolutely amazing, and that will also help us obviously within our rankings on Coin Market Cap and Coin Geeko. You know, because our uh, our kind of uh, volume will become greater, etc. Also, uh, we did an analysis of the top kind of 20 exchanges and all of them traded significantly more pairs than we did. That's why we've added, we've decided to add 41 new pairs uh, and we will be adding uh, most definitely a lot more new pairs by the end of the year. Uh, if you remember, I had a commitment that we will have 100 new pairs by the end of the year. So that's what we're aiming for. I think it is achievable considering that, you know, we've managed to do almost half of it uh, within uh, within a week. So that's absolutely good news. Uh, so what else has been going on uh, within our platform? Uh, oh, yes. So the new 17 new pairs that we did. So we did Alice on Monday. We did ApeCoin and PhilCoin on Tuesday. Uh, we did SHZ and Loom on yesterday. And today, uh, the announcement should have come through that we did BLZ, MKR and ID. Uh, so uh, those are kind of the main um, announcement. announcements. So also, uh, let me just get this up because I uh, unfortunately don't 
don't remember. Uh, we had two new stakings uh, on our platform. Just wait a second because I need to uh, I need to get it uh, somehow. Sorry, let me just uh, let me just have a look because and unfortunately I uh, I'm doing this live uh, and I remember certain things so uh, I don't want to lie to you and I want to provide you with the kind of most up to date uh, information. Uh, just wait a second. I'm gonna get it up. I'm gonna get it up. Blah 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 blah. I'm terribly sorry that I'm doing it uh, live. It's not very professional. I know. So yes, we had near uh, staking for 30 days, uh, four and a half percent APR, and we have AVAX staking for 30 days, 4.5 percent APR. So we've. I think we've announced it yesterday. Um, so yeah, that's uh, what is going on. So uh, let me get this up. Yeah, brilliant. So what else has been going on? So we had 41 new pairs, two more stakings, as I promised at the last AMA session. Uh, we're going to have more kind of short-term stakings because of the risk uh, factor. We can't really provide long-term stakings yet, uh, but we will be doing uh, long-term staking in the future. But at the moment, uh, you can only stake uh, PXP for long-term and kind of some coins that we introduce occasionally on our platform. Uh, but we will most definitely have uh, more stakings by the end of the year. We will most definitely have one or two uh, next month, if not more. And we will be adding more coins to our platform as well. Uh, as well as uh, new, um, new launchpad listings. So, you know, we're working on this kind of stuff. Uh, so what else has been going on? We had a uh, impromptu competition uh, for 300 uh, PXP tokens. Uh, so to, in order to participate, you had to subscribe to our Twitter, you had to join our Telegram, and you had to uh, follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, so that uh, has been concluded, and the winner will be posted uh, in tomorrow's update. Uh, I think we were supposed to choose it at the AMA session, uh, but yet again, uh, I uh, I was not informed. So, so, you know, I would have chosen it if my marketing team would have warned me. Uh, but uh, we will announce it uh, tomorrow. Uh, I will probably record a message on uh, Telegram. Uh, on Twitter, uh, sorry, you know, how we choose the user and we will pay him or her 300 uh, euros, $300 in PXP. So what else has been happening? Uh, we, uh, to tomorrow we have Black Friday or is it ne last week, next week? I'm not sure. We'll have something, uh, something exciting done for that thing. And on uh, next Tuesday, we will have a uh, another competition similar to the ones that I've just announced, uh, where you would have to follow certain things and randomly we will select uh, somebody and give some money back uh, on Tuesday. So that will probably be announced tomorrow or on Monday. You know, keep your eyes peeled. Uh, and I think the top prize is 300 or 500, I can't remember. And the last two prizes are 50 and 100. So uh, that would be a similar thing where we follow, we have to follow uh, on Twitter and follow on Instagram uh, and you will get that prize. Uh, so I think those are the kind of the main things that has, has been going on uh, within the company. Um, I don't think there has been any major news within the industry really. Um, there has been some developments with the FTX, uh, but overall, I don't think uh, we've had anything major uh, apart from the political stuff that has been going on around Europe and America and Israel and etc. And obviously Bitcoin uh, going up. Uh, so is it the start of the crypto spring? I hope so. Uh, that really reflects well on us. Uh, so let's get our our eyes peeled uh, and let's uh, let's see what is going to happen uh, in the future. So I think that is all uh, that I wanted uh, to discuss. Um, I think we're ready, ready for the questions, Diana. 
All right. So here they are. What efforts are underway to secure the proof of reserves badge on Coin Market Cap and Coin Gecko, and uh, how do you see this improving investor trust? And is it a uh, prerequisite for achieving Tier One exchange status? It is. Uh, so let me start from the last point. It is a prerequisite uh, to achieve a Tier One point uh, because. Uh, in order to get it, you have to have 10 points on CoinGecko and 10 points on CoinMarketCap. And the only way to do that, you have to have the proof of reserves uh, badge. Um, so we are working on it. We're working with um, external audit crypto auditors uh, who will be auditing our reserves uh, and proving that we have enough reserves in order to cover our liabilities and our trades and etc cetera, etc cetera. so we're now kind of in, in the process of uh, finding the best partner uh, that will provide it for us uh, we there are two options you can either self-report or you can either hire an external organization and they will do it for you and we feel that uh, hiring somebody external is more trustworthy as opposed to uh, as opposed to doing it ourselves, uh, so that's how we're going to approach it. We've been uh, looking at it for quite a while now. Um, you know, it's it's a new thing that has been kind of uh, appearing in the market. You know, after the collapse of the FTX, uh, so we will be obviously uh, we've investigated that issue, and now when we're kind of very comfortable within the tier two exchange the only way for us to move up to tier one is to get that uh that badge uh so we are working on uh, on that in order to achieve the top results on coin uh obviously that will push us comfortably in the top 10. what else and on coin market cap unfortunately our the, you know the two uh rank ranking agencies work completely different uh, Coin Geeko has a very complex uh, way that it kind of it looks at uh, the exchanges, you know, and you have to get certain points for certain things. So you get points for liquidity, for the team, for kind of uh, bug bounty, for the transparency, and you, you can go into the methodology. And it's a very very complex document that they ask us to do uh but you know with all of those points they kind of feel that they cover all of the bases and uh that's how they determine the ranking on coin market cap they have a completely different approach uh they uh do look at certain similar parameters such as traffic uh, liquidity, proof of reserves as well, but their main kind of weighting of the ranking is on the volume. So our volume has increased. Uh, you know, at the moment is uh, it is at around hundred thousand, hundred million uh, dollars a day, uh, which is incredibly high. But it's not obviously enough compared to other exchanges. So, uh, and we can't, you know, artificially increase it. So that's why the rankings differ, uh, because they look at, uh, at different things. They look at safety, they look at, um, yeah, at different parameters. And that's why uh, you get different rankings within different, uh, within different ranking agencies. And obviously CoinMarketCap used to be kind of one of the very first pioneers who kind of the uh, S&P &P and, you know, the Moody's of the crypto world. And then it was acquired by Binance, uh, but they kind of, I don't think they've improved their methodology that much. They change it, you know, occasionally, uh, but it's not as comprehensive as coin market caps, unfortunately. Um, but that that's why the rankings differ uh, and that's why uh, for example coin market cap had ftx as number two for a number of years but we all know where that led you know but on coin i think they were quite a lot lower um so that's probably why we have uh we have 
a difference. And second of all, uh, the question about the trust. Obviously, the badge with the proof of reserves, only few exchanges have it. I think only about like 15 exchanges have it. Um, that will obviously improve our image within uh, the community. And that will uh, make our exchange a lot more trustworthy uh, within the community as well, which is incredibly important. Uh, and obviously, it's fundamental uh, in order to gain the kind of the trust of uh, of our investors. And as I mentioned before, yes, it is a prerequisite uh, in order to obtain the tier one uh, listing, not tier one listing, tier one exchange uh, badge. Because this is why we're here. We created like, an amazing exchange. We did take it a bit slow, uh, but we're there, you know, and we're now kind of uh, quite close to the finish line. So, you know, we're there and we will have all of those points uh, and we will be in top 10 in no time. Uh, mark my words. When do you anticipate commencing your marketing initiative? promote the exchange uh well we are we've already had quite a lot of uh quite a lot of marketing activities uh we've um we did a mass uh emailing campaign um uh we did a lot of kind of traffic campaigns you know the campaign that we did with um uh for the 300 dollar one yeah yeah that's also part of marketing as well Unfortunately, kind of, as I explained at the last AMA session, uh, crypto marketing differs at different stages of the development of the company. You know, if you have somebody like Binance, you know, you could, uh, they run out of all options. <laughs> you know, they've already attracted all of the people that they could possibly attract. And they've literally hit a wall, uh, but they have plenty of money. So what they're doing now is, you know, they're making uh tv series you know where they promote binance you know some people bought uh celebrities and paid them copious amounts of money uh and you know renamed stadiums after them uh i don't think this kind of marketing really works but it, it does work if you don't have anything to go by uh, but we are kind of doing the bottom line marketing. Obviously, when we hit, uh, as I said before, our ranking on CoinGecko is the best marketing tool ever. Uh, so when we hit number 14, we had about, what, I think 20 or 30,000 within an hour, which is absolutely insane considering uh, that's, that's quite a lot you know, for our platform, considering that we had quarter of a million uh, at the beginning of the year, well, almost 300. Um, so, you know, we had quite a lot more people joining our platform. Now we're doing uh, other kinds of marketing, you know, kind of posting in the chats, uh, attracting, uh, we have, we'll have have some bloggers uh, doing the marketing for us as well. The result, you know, the conversion of those things is questionable, but... Uh, Pretty much, it's a it's a step by step thing, and we're doing we already did the first steps. Now we're kind of climbing up the steps, and we're ranking up the uh, the uh, marketing activities for our exchange at the moment. So the marketing has already started, uh, but uh, it will go in full swing. Uh, I think within the next couple of months, uh, but we're kind of doing the kind of bottom line marketing where we attract the users, where we post on the websites, where we uh, kind of have competitions, where people will come to us and kind of uh, trade, you know, trading competitions actually attract quite a lot of users as well. So we're doing all of those things. Um, yeah. But uh, will there be, be a time when, when we will be doing um, renaming stadiums? Who knows? Or, you know, doing uh, TV marketing? Uh, who knows? I don't think that kind of works for us at the moment, you know. So when you write to me and you say like, oh, Vlad, you know, you know, such and such company did that for a couple of million of dollars. Yeah, you know, our marketing budget for that month is that much, you know. So we, we, we are developing very, very slowly. 
understand the frustration. But we are doing marketing activities. It might not be as obvious, you know, because those kind of big marketing things, you might think they work, but it's literally, uh, if you calculate the conversion, conversion is something like, you know, if you invest a dollar, how many how many dollars, you know, customer acquisition costs, you know, how many dollars each customer costs you. So we are doing kind of the cheapest uh, things that we are able to do at this stage of the company because, you know, a couple of months down the line, we will exhaust all of those opportunities and we will have to invest a lot more money in order to acquire our new customers. Uh, but at the moment, we already did, you know, quite a lot of competitions. We already did quite a lot of kind of uh, mass email campaigns, uh, which actually proven to be quite successful. Overall, we will be ordering um, the bloggers, you know, the top uh, crypto bloggers uh, in due time as well. There will be more competitions, there will be more uh, co-marketing, there will be more um, kind of listing opportunities, etc. So we are doing marketing, uh, uh, but it's not, uh, if you're expecting marketing, yes, if you're expecting something very, very grand, uh, that will happen sometime down the line but at the moment you know because marketing campaign is kind of a hill that you have to climb and you kind of have to acquire your customers for the cheapest price when you can you know because that's when you're able to do it at the bottom of that hill but then as you move up your customer acquisition costs increases increases and increases uh so we are still able to kind of do those kind of rudimentary marketing and then we'll have to move on to uh, kind of the general crypto world and kind of adverts in uh, coin. Um, what's that news website, Diana? Coin. Coindesk, uh, you know, some adverts in Coindesk, some adverts in kind of the industry publications on Twitter, the influencers. That would be a next step. Uh, and the following step would be kind of more general marketing. Uh, but yes, marketing campaign is already going on uh, and it will be coming in full swing uh, when we will reach that stage. Um, obviously, with the news that Bitcoin is recovering, that's absolutely great. That means that people will trade more crypto, the volumes will increase. Uh, that's absolutely great for us as well, because that means that we will make more money. Uh, and that will also that also means that, you know, the um, the overall sentiment within the crypto industry is improving, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, I think I've answered your question. Coinpay offers a wide range of trading pairs. What is the strategic rationale behind this approach? And can you elaborate on the selection criteria for uh, listing new coins and tokens? <clears throat> yes, sure. Uh, so offering a diverse range of trading pairs, uh, we kind of cater uh, to the varied interests of our investors and people who are on our platform kind of, uh, and the diversity includes the, you know, certain cryptocurrencies, stable coins, uh, the newer meme tokens, you know, the kind of new project tokens, etc. So, because, you know, back in the day, the crypto world used to be just, you know, one coin, and then it expanded to the multitude, you know, everybody nowadays could create a coin. Uh, and there are big, behind certain projects, there is big money, there is big technology as well. So uh, certain investors are long time holders, certain investors kind of want to get in and out and kind of, you know, they make money on short term deals that happens. So with that varied scope of uh, the investors, we have to cater to all of their needs. And as I mentioned earlier in my introduction, when we did a research of uh, all of the uh, all of the top 20 crypto exchanges they have all of them have quite a lot of crypto pairs like some of them have thousands upon, upon thousands you know and i have no idea how they manage to keep up uh, but you know that's the world uh, so we have to compete with them so um yeah uh, that's why we're adding them uh, we had i think within the top 20 exchanges we had the fewest number of trading pairs that's why we kind of wanted to increase it 
Uh, and also, uh, what else? Uh, what was the question? Sorry. Uh, yeah. So uh, the the why we did it. So in order to in order for us to kind of be in line with all of the major exchanges kind of we had to introduce it second of all i've promised about a year ago that we will have 100 uh, trading pairs by the end of the year we will most certainly surpass that uh, i think we might have uh, 150 or maybe even 200 who knows um, by the end of the year and that's very good as well so that in improves our rating and that obviously improves the user experience uh, of our users who are now able to trade any pair they want, you know, in a multitude of ways, whether, uh, you know, it's a stable coin pair, like, you know, the USDT, or it's an Ethereum pair, or it's a Bitcoin pair, whatever, you know, uh, those things are important for investors, you know, so they would have uh, the best kind of trading experience within uh, within our platform. Uh, and we obviously, uh, and yes, in terms of the the last bit of the question was in term uh, about the sele selection criteria. So in terms of the selection criteria, what we look for is obviously the volume. So if the volume is uh, very high, uh, you know, on coin market cap and coin Geeko, we might select that point. That means that, you know, our users will find it attractive. Uh, what else we look for? We look for the community. We look for the technology behind uh, the coin. Uh, and obviously, you know, we don't want this coin to scam. We want this coin to, uh, to be, you know, as resilient as possible and we don't want it to collapse within you know the next couple of weeks or days as it did happen uh with certain coins who were quite popular it had like you know millions and millions of trading in trading volume but then at one point it just completely collapsed so uh we don't want that to happen so we look very very carefully at what we select about the future prospects of the coin we don't want to, to list any shit coins we look we sometimes list meme coins uh, we might delist them in the future when the kind of the novelty wears off. Um, but yeah, that's the selection, uh, main selection criteria, I think. Are you still pursuing the listing of PXP on CoinPay as a tier two platform or do you have plans to list it independently? Okay, as I understood the question, we are planning to list PXP token on our own exchange. Uh, after we will list it on the tier one exchange. And I know it seems counterintuitive because we are ourselves nearing that mark as an exchange, as point pay exchange. It's all very confusing with exchanges, exchanges, you know, tier one, tier two, etc. So PXP, when PXP will be listed on tier one exchange, we will list PXP on our own exchange. And by that point, we might become tier one exchange ourselves, if that makes sense. Um, I hope it does make sense. Uh, why? Because we want to uh, create more transparency. We want to create more usability for our users um, and obviously a flexibility for our traders. So you can trade on point pay and on your favorite uh, tier one exchange. So I think that answers your question. How does your exchange address the issue of liquidity, especially for less popular or newly listed cryptocurrencies? Uh, well, I don't want to be lying, really, uh, but uh, we do occasionally employ certain market making tricks. Uh, we have kind of the counter trading tricks as well. Uh, we um, what else? We have our own liquidity on our platform, obviously, because people trade on our platform. Uh, sometimes when uh, the liquidity is lacking in certain aspects, we might employ uh, a liquidity of external providers. So we have a number of liquidity providers uh, that are connected via API to our platform. Uh, and we also sometimes employ, uh, sometimes employ the liquidity of other big exchanges as well so when kind of our own liquidity hits uh the rock bottom which sometimes it might uh 
usually then the liquidity will go to the liquidity provider and if the liquidity provider is not able to cope with it it will go to some kind of external exchange i hope that makes sense it's all very complex uh but pretty much uh we have our own liquidity which kind of i think covers about 95 percent of our trades and then we have uh kind of as an additional measure uh as an additional measure we have liquidity providers uh that are connected to our platform that the majority of exchanges use anyways uh and we sometimes on very rare occasions employ the liquidity of other major kind of tier one exchanges if that makes sense what safeguards and protocols are in place to prevent and respond to market manipulation and fraudulent activities on uh, the exchange uh, so we have various AI kind of driven tools uh, within our toolbox that, you know, we uh, use in order to kind of prevent the manipulation of the market and kind of uh, to detect the fraudulent activities. Uh, we have certain programs that we run uh, through uh, our databases in order to find kind of any fraud, you know, whether people transfer money between accounts fraudulently uh, we have a kind of blockchain detectors we sometimes employ uh, the use of uh, kind of the blockchain um, special agencies that kind of prevent fraud as well um, so within our system we have kind of robust kind of stops and locks you know that uh, and red flags that we and yellow flags and you know other flags that we raise within our platform so for example when a user is trying to make a withdrawal or when a user is trying to transfer the money from one account to another we see the whole history we see all the hashes and we are able to say that and we're able to tell you know whether a person is moving the money between the two accounts or whether that person is trying to test the system uh, or whether that person is trying to find the vulnerabilities of the system etc 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 so we have those systems in place we didn't have them two years ago but we do have them now it's a state-of-the-art thing uh, and in terms of uh, fraud in general uh, we have a KYC and KYB systems uh, that are kind of worldwide based you know top exchanges use it uh top certain banks use that uh, system as well so that's what we have um and what else uh yeah i think those are the main things so yeah within our system we have uh robust ai driven kind of stops that help us to detect fraud uh and detect uh kind of copious trades when people are you know trying to make a trade which is too big uh etc you know trying to manipulate the market and in terms of kind of the customer safety we have the kyc know your customer and kyb know your business policies uh where we monitor kind of you know what people do uh with very large trades we actually have to report it to the relevant authorities uh that's uh, why we have for example the license within the european union because we comply within those within those uh, rules i think those are the main things we have a security officer in our platform and we also have a um a uh, ky aml officer uh anti-money laundering officer that kind of monitors all of the transactions as well checks our users against uh, certain databases the anti-money laundering database the there is a pep database politically exposed person database uh, and there are kind of anti-terrorist databases as well i can't really remember but there are a few databases uh, that we employ uh, within our system and they're kind of constantly updated so we are by law required to check every single user that we have on our platform against those databases as well so we do all of those things like any financial institution does you know so that's what that's kind of the things that we we have in place and in terms of kind of the security of the user funds as i said before in the first question we are going to be uh having a uh, an external externally audited proof of reserve so people uh will know that we actually have the, the uh, this money on our platform uh and what else um yes we have certain audits you know like a certic audit 
uh, as well for our platform. So we we are very, very safe and we do things by the book. And sometimes it stops us from developing as a platform, but I think it's better to be uh, to be safe than sorry. How does Point Pay manage customer inquiries and complaints? What uh, ongoing improvements are being made to enhance customer service? Um, so uh, we have a dedicated small team, not very small, but we have a dedicated team uh, that works 24-7 um, and that answers all of your inquiries. Uh, we will be employing something uh, kind of AI based uh, in the future, but, uh, you know, because most cases could be solved uh, within an algorithm or within uh, kind of the FAQ section of the page. Uh, but sometimes, yes, a human touch is needed. Uh, we pride ourselves on our customer support, you know. The one thing that all of the all of our users say to me how amazing our customer support is, and that they're able to solve any single case, that they're able to pull up anything, any single transaction, uh, and they're able to correct anything within the system. You know, they're absolutely amazing. They do a an amazing job. And apart from them, we have a team of kind of. Um, of officers who kind of deal uh, with the transactions themselves. So we have a front line, we have a back line as well, kind of a back back office, a front office, you know. Uh, those are all of, the, all of the people that you see in your Telegram, in the chat that we have at the moment. Uh, so yeah, there are plenty, plenty of people there uh, helping, helping us to support you. And as we will expand as a company, we will probably have to uh, hire more people, uh, which we will, and we will probably have to um, do something AI language based. Uh, we're kind of considering the options at the moment, kind of to sift through uh, the easy uh, inquiries, and if the inquiry is not able to being solved by the robot, it will be transferred to the uh, to the real person. Uh, so I think that's kind of how it works within the major companies. So we will have to come to that uh, actually very, very soon. Uh, but at the moment, uh, yeah, pretty much we have an amazing support that manually, uh, that are manually able to solve any single issue that you might have on the platform. And if you have any question, they're there to help you. They're bilingual, multilingual, and they will be able to help you in any language uh, of your choice. What is your perspective on the current state of cryptocurrency regulations and uh, how do you foresee these regulations evolving in the coming years? Um, I've answered this question a couple of times before, uh, but uh, my main um, kind of my main uh, take on it is that regulation is good for the industry because you have clear rules, you prevent fraud and I'm always for doing things by the book. Uh, I think regulations are good. Obviously, you know, if you have very clear rules, uh, there are ways to kind of avoid them and to find loopholes, etc. But I think industry is at the stage of uh, kind of inception, you know, so it's at the beginning of its regulatory journey. So we have to, uh, we have to regulate it. Because if it's a wild west, there could be quite a lot of scammers, there could be quite a lot of other things going on like the FTX, etc. You know, the uh, European Union managed to come to senses and they passed, uh, you know, relatively good uh, regulation. It's mostly concerns about uh, recording the uh, recording the KYC of the customers and kind of reporting certain transactions. Uh, and in America, they did a similar things a thing for the Americans, but they haven't kind of came close to uh, regulating it for the whole country on the federal level, but I think we're kind of working towards it. Uh, and obviously, apart from regulation, we also have to talk about the taxation, how we tax the current uh, cryptocurrencies, whether we tax them as a currency or whether we tax them as a kind of uh, a bond or whatever, you know. So regulators have a lot of questions to ask, answer. Um, Europe is moving in the right direction. Uh, and I was hoping that an FTX scandal was 
supposed to be a good shakeup for the whole industry. Uh, but as I see, kind of, uh, it's not, you know, because everybody is concerned about uh, about the future uh, elections, and I don't think the either neither Trump or Biden administration is kind of on their top priority at the moment. So that's my take on it. Security breaches have been a concern in the crypto industry. Uh, how does CoinPay learn from those past incidents to enhance security measures and protect users? Well, thankfully enough, we haven't had uh, a lot of incidents. Um, well, we had incidents about two or three years ago when we've just started as a platform, but we haven't had any ex uh, incidents in the last two years. Uh, no security breach is nothing, you know, because our platform is quite robust. We hired the top industry experts from uh, the banking field in order to write our platform and in order to put kind of certain things in place. Uh, stealing the money is literally virtually impossible because we uh, keep them on cold wallets and we only have, you know, certain amount of money that we kind of that is available for withdrawals until we have to kind of dip in into our cold wallets and there is a robust system of how we request this money. That's a kind of a regular thing on all of the platforms. It's called a liquidity reserve. Uh, the banks do exactly the same thing. You know, they have a certain amount of money that is in free circulation, you know, for everyday transactions because you kind of look at the statistics of what you, uh, what kind of people needed to withdraw within certain days. Uh, and then, you know, that kind of goes out and goes in freely. Uh, but then you keep the bulk of your money in a safe deposit box, let's put it this way. So, you know, if even if something horrible might happen and some scammer managed to get in through our system, he will be only able to steal know, like what 5% of the customer's deposits. Um, so that's fine. You know, not all of them. And that's how most uh, exchange, well, that's how all exchanges work, really. Uh, but we haven't had any any uh, any uh, security flaws, any security breaches. Uh, recently, we've introduced the hacking proof. Uh, a couple of days ago, um, you know, the bug bounty, where people are able to hack our website, and if they're able to do that, uh, we will pay them money automatically. So we have that program going on, and so far no one was able to do anything uh, because we know that, you know, we are compliant with all of the top industry standards. So uh, we'll see um, how that works out. Plus, we have uh, two-factor authentication on our platform for the, with the email and the Google Authenticator. Uh, when you log in, you can literally set it up in order for you to have it literally every single time you log in. We have the auto log out options. A couple of years ago, a couple of months ago, you might remember that we did a compulsory, uh, compulsory um, password change. Oh, actually, it, it happened this summer. So this summer we did a compulsory uh, password change because we ran the kind of the passwords through the global uh, kind of global password system and it turned out that you know there are quite a, lot of, a few of you not a lot you know less than a couple of percent but there are quite a lot of you who uh, used uh, generic passwords you know and when we've just set up the platform as it happened you know the uh, the password standard was quite low and that some of you had the kind of this kind of low password level on the system. So we managed to change that. Uh, and we might be doing some kind of password change reminders uh, in the future. We might be introducing some kind of uh, phone verification, you know, the SMS, you know, the text verification. So we might be introducing that in the future as well. But overall, uh, we are compliant with all the rules. We are very safe with auto log, log out options and kind of the two factor authentication. Uh, and the email and the Google uh, kind of authenticator app thing, you know, I think we kind of cover 
all of the bases, really. So I think we're very, very safe. Uh, and with the re recent uh, reintroduction of hack and proof uh, bug bounty, that kind of opens us to the world where people are able to go go in and kind of where we invite uh, the world to go in and to uh, hack us and we'll actually give them money. So, yeah, uh, that is what is happening. Could you provide insights into the technology and infrastructure behind the platform? Uh, its capacity and the scalability to handle high trading volumes? We have a capacity to handle. Uh, so uh, one of the reasons why we uh, changed the platform over the summer was that we've realized that we are not able to scale our project and that when we will have a lot of users and when we will have a lot of trades, the platform will literally crash. So one of the reasons why we've rewritten uh, the platform was because of that. So the new platform is fully compliant with like, you know, it can conduct millions, billions of trades uh, depending on the infrastructure, you know, but the infrastructure is scalable. So, you know, you don't have, uh, you know, you don't have billions of people coming over to your platform overnight. You know, that would obviously crash any platform, like even like Facebook. Well, probably not Facebook, but you know some major platform like I know, like Binance that would most certainly crash Binance. So obviously, when people join the platform, that happens gradually, uh, and uh, we already see some increase in the trading activities and the number of users on our platform as well. Uh, so yeah, we're fully ready. The platform is fully scalable, uh, and you know we're able to hold any amount of users possible. Uh, you know, our platform was rewritten specifically to hold millions and millions of people and to conduct millions of transactions a day. I'm not sure that it's able to hold uh, the high frequency tr trading at the moment, as you mentioned uh, in your question, but that is most certainly uh, could be improved upon. Uh, and I think that would be that hard. Um, so yeah, we have a number of servers, we have servers, uh, the best AWS kind of standards uh, of uh, kind of servers, you know, we have servers in America, we have servers in Asia, we have servers in Europe, uh, we have di disaster recovery policies, we have backups, you know, everything is done to uh, the utmost standards of uh, the industry. Given the importance of onboarding newcomers to cryptocurrency trading and investment, what strategies do you have in place to educate and retain new customers? Uh, well, in terms of onboarding, we have uh, an onboarding option where you kind of log in and we guide you through every single thing that you have to uh, that you have to do in order to kind of uh, go into our platform. We will be improving it uh, slightly in the future as well. So. When you log in, you have to provide your email and then we will kind of guide you to make your first deposit and to pass your KYC and to make your first trade, etc., etc., etc. And it's all done in a very intuitive and friendly way. There is a little bar that kind of guides you through every single step. So we did that. Uh, we used to do quite a lot of uh, crypto school videos back in the day. Uh, they didn't prove to be terribly popular. I think there is so many there are so many educational materials uh, in the crypto industry uh, that I don't personally think it's necessary to waste our efforts on it. Uh, but obviously, when we will reach a certain stage, we will probably be resuming that program uh, because, uh, well, you know, making a five-minute animated video actually costs quite a lot of money. It costs several thousand dollars uh and obviously that money could be spent better elsewhere uh for a company of our size uh, and our ambition so uh when we will reach a certain stage we will most definitely be doing a lot more educational uh educational uh, videos and what else you said tutorials yes tutorials most definitely we will be doing more of them uh by the beginning of the year i think they're very very important um yeah and we will also be introducing the simulated environments like a uh, trading accounts where, you know, 
you're able to kind of virtually trade without kind of actually wasting your money so uh, we will be doing that uh, that as well that improves the user experience and that kind of uh, invites people onto our platform well and that was the last question thank you very much for all of your answers well thank you all very much uh, I'm terribly sorry that I've kind of forgotten certain things in Bob's uh, but nonetheless, uh, it was a pleasure seeing you all. Next time, when I'll see you, it will be November, almost Christmas time, which is absolutely insane. This year went incredibly fast. Uh, but, you know, we are getting strong. We This year was incredibly amazing for us. You know, we went from being a 100th exchange to uh, getting into the top 14. We are introducing new pairs. We've completely rewritten our platform. What a year, you know, what an absolutely amazing year that we're having at Point Bay. So I hope uh, that you're all enjoying this journey with us. Uh, thank you all. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Diana, for collecting the questions and helping me out today as well. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful weekend. Tune in for uh, the new competition on Halloween. Uh, and we'll probably most definitely be doing uh, competitions maybe every week, every other week in order to engage new users, in order to attract them to our platform. So thank you all very much and have a wonderful day, wonderful week. Bye bye.